What if I told you, the magnificent temples of India, those timeless structures that have stood firm for thousands of years, were not just built with devotion but with a science so precise, so mathematically advanced, that modern architects still marvel at it. Geometry, the language of shapes, symmetry, and proportions, was at the very heart of India's ancient knowledge system. Think about it. Today, even with rulers, compasses, and digital tools, drawing a perfect circle by hand feels almost impossible. But thousands of years ago, Indian sages and craftsmen, without any of these instruments, designed temples that aligned with the cosmos, carved sculptures of breathtaking accuracy, and built altars whose dimensions followed laws of geometry that modern students still struggle to understand. How did they achieve such mastery? What was the hidden science behind these creations? This journey takes us deep into the world of Vedic geometry, the sacred mathematics of ancient India. To make it simple, we will explore four areas where geometry flourished. Number one, Kalpa, the science of Vedic rituals and fire altars. Number two, Jyotisha, astronomy and the study of light. Number three, Shulpa Shastra, the art and geometry of temple building. Number four, Sri Vidya, the mystical science of divine diagrams and yantras. Each of these reveals how India's past was not just about faith, but also about science and precision. Kalpa, the geometry of fire altars. Let's begin with Kalpa, the code of rituals, the very foundation of yajnas and sacrifices. Every Vedic ritual had to be performed with absolute precision, from chanting mantras to building the fire altar where offerings were made to the gods. But here lies the mystery. These altars were not simple piles of wood and stone. They were geometrical marvels. The rules for constructing them are found in the Sulbastras, the oldest known texts on applied geometry in the world. The word sulba means rope. Since rulers and scales did not exist, ropes were used to measure length, draw lines, and create shapes. These sutras contain detailed instructions to build altars in squares, circles, triangles, trapeziums, and even falcon-shaped patterns, all with precise areas. And here's the fascinating part. The altars had to be different in shape but equal in area. Imagine being told to construct a square, a circle, and a semicircle, all with the exact same area, without formulas, without calculators. That was the challenge faced by the priests. And they succeeded. One Sulba Sutra gives an ingenious method. If you want to transform a square into a circle of the same area, you mark specific points on a line, divided in ratios, and use the rope to draw a circle whose area matches perfectly. Thousands of years ago, they were already solving problems that today we link with pi and advanced geometry. In fact, it was in these texts that the principle we call Pythagoras' theorem was first written, long before Pythagoras was even born. Maharishi Bodhiyana clearly stated that in a right-angled triangle, the square of the diagonal equals the sum of the squares of the sides. What the Greeks celebrated as a discovery was already part of India's ritual geometry. But the brilliance doesn't end there. Some fire altars, like the Shaina Chitti, were shaped like a falcon, built with a thousand bricks arranged in five precise layers. Each brick was cut into specific shapes, triangles, trapeziums, rectangles, all fitting together like a cosmic puzzle. Even more astonishing, the rules demanded that no more than 200 bricks could be used per layer, and the odd and even layers had to follow different layouts. This wasn't just geometry. It was applied mathematics, woven into spiritual practice. Kalpa shows us that in ancient India, ritual was science, and science was sacred. Jyotisha, the geometry of the heavens. Next, we turn our gaze upwards, to the sky. Jyotisha is one of the most misunderstood branches of Indian knowledge. Many dismiss it as astrology or superstition, but at its core, Jyotisha means study of light. It was about tracking the movement of the sun, moon, and planets with such precision that it laid the foundations of both astronomy and mathematics in India. Here's a simple truth. Without Jyotisha, there would be no Indian calendar, no calculation of seasons, eclipses, or auspicious timings. To do all this, geometry was essential. Ancient astronomers had to measure angles, construct observatories, and even build instruments like the astrolabe. Cities like Ujjain became centers of astronomical brilliance. Positioned on the Tropic of Cancer, Ujjain once served as India's prime meridian, the place where time itself was calculated. Not surprisingly, Lord Shiva here is worshipped as Mahakal, the Lord of Time. The contributions of Indian astronomers are legendary. Aryabhata, in the 5th century, gave formulas to calculate the area of a circle without even using pi, 
by relying on ropes to measure circumference and radius. Centuries later, Modhava of Sangamagrama introduced something revolutionary. He expressed pi as an infinite series. Today, this is called the Modhava Gregory series, and it became one of the foundations of calculus. Think about that for a second. Long before Europe's Newton and Leibniz, Indian scholars were expanding geometry into infinite dimensions, driven not by commerce or industry, but by the sacred desire to measure time and understand the cosmos. Jyotisha proves that when you look at the stars, you also unlock the secrets of mathematics. Shulpa Shastra, the geometry of temples. From the heavens, let's come back to earth, to temples, the beating heart of Indian culture. The word Shulpa means art, but in truth, Shulpa Shastra was a blend of engineering, architecture, sculpture, and sacred geometry. Every temple in India is a coded diagram of the universe. Its pillars, arches, towers, and sanctums were not randomly designed. They followed geometric blueprints preserved in texts like Manasara, Silparatna, and Vastu Shastra. Look at the towering Goparams of South India, or the Vimanas above sanctums. Each follows strict proportions, with layers stacked like cosmic steps leading towards the sky. Even the carvings on walls, the symmetry of pillars, and the angles of arches reflect geometrical principles. Why so much precision? Because a temple was not just a building, it was meant to be a living yantra, a machine that connected the devotee to the cosmos. Its measurements had to harmonize with planetary ratios, natural laws, and aesthetic beauty. Geometry here became a sacred language, one that allowed stone to vibrate with divinity. Shulpa Shastra shows us that for Indians, art was never separate from science. It was science made beautiful. Shri Vidya, the geometry of the divine. Finally, we arrive at the most mysterious of all, Shri Vidya, the sacred worship of yantras. Unlike idols carved in stone, here divinity was expressed through pure geometry, symmetrical diagrams drawn with absolute precision. A yantra is not just a diagram. Each line, each vertex, each triangle is believed to hold a deity. Meditating on a yantra is like walking through a labyrinth of geometry, moving closer to the divine center. Among the countless yantras, the most revered is the Sri Yantra, a complex pattern of nine interlocking triangles representing the union of Shiva and Shakti. It looks simple, but constructing it with perfect accuracy is considered one of the hardest tasks in geometry. Its symmetry has fascinated not just Indian sages, but also modern scientists in Europe and America who studied its fractal-like properties. Other yantras, like the Ganesha Yantra, Bhairava Yantra, and Mahakala Yantra, are equally intricate, each demanding flawless proportions. To consecrate one, a priest must ensure measurements accurate to the smallest unit, because even a slight error breaks the spiritual energy encoded in the diagram. Sri Vidya teaches us that geometry itself can be worship, shapes can become gods. Conclusion, the forgotten science. So what does all this tell us? That India's ancient knowledge was never just myth, never just ritual. It was science, mathematics, and geometry, seamlessly woven into spirituality. The Sulba Strass show us the world's oldest applied geometry. Jyotisha reveals how the quest for understanding the stars gave birth to trigonometry and calculus. Shulpa Shastra demonstrates how temples were cosmic diagrams made of stone. And Sri Vidya proves that even worship itself could be transformed into geometry. Sadly, much of this heritage has been forgotten, dismissed as mythology or overshadowed by Greek and European names. But the truth is clear. For thousands of years, India was a land where devotion and science walked hand in hand. Every time you see a temple tower piercing the sky, every time you glimpse a yantra etched into a shrine, remember this. Behind that beauty lies the genius of Vedic geometry, the science that united heaven, earth, and the human soul. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more inspiring content. See you in the next one.